So this is the killer. We know it's built well. You guys can hear it sounds great. This Apollo is backward compatible to Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2. Don't believe me, I have this running now on a 2012 MacBook Pro. So the coolest thing about that photo, I actually took that photo with this, my camera, my 6D Mark II from Canon and this lens right here, which is my wife's. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my home studio. I am Archie Beats and I am here to help. And boy, what an awesome audio interface, the Universal Audio Apollo X4. And if you guys are interested in this cool microphone that I'm talking on right now, this is the Universal Audio SD1. This is the standard dynamic microphone. The coolest thing about this microphone is it has presets that actually comes with it. This microphone is sitting about $299. But before we jump into the Apollo X4 video, I really want to show you guys the cool thing about this microphone and the presets that it comes with. Let's jump on the screen so I can show you guys the exact preset that I'm using right now to sound like this through the Apollo X4. Also some other presets. So as you guys can see right here, this is the screen. If we go here to inserts right here, you can see that there are UA Mic Apollo channel strip presets. This is spoken word, has the nice clarity up top and excuse the computer fan, this is a very old computer, has spoken word right here up top. And you guys hear that? And it has podcasts, for example, it changed to a really deep broadcast, kind of warm, you know, personal right there in your face, like sound. And if you go here to lead vocals, it's, um, you got a reverb and as we change it, this is explained guys, as we change it, let's exit out here. Let's put it back on something that's not reverb, but the strips changes over here like that. So let's close out. Now what happens when you initiate each one of those channel strip settings is the 610B pops up. Also the Potec EQ P pops up as well. And it just depends on which setting you use. They actually have the settings picked out for you. Now one of the things I like to do is I own a lot of these um, purchase instead of the legacy. So I go in and replace them with the actual purchase um, version of these plugins. The legacy plugins are still really, really, really good. So guys, once again, as we select each one of the channel strips, one of the channel strip settings, um, it changes the plugins on the insert. So piano, but not a piano, but it changes according to Island guitar. You guys see it's actually changing the inserts on the channel strip. And this is a really cool thing that I feel like the SD1 offers, especially within the console software. So the Apollo X4 is the all around audio interface for beginners, for professionals, for music producers, for audio engineers, for everybody. It sounds great. It has elite A to D conversion. The sound quality is just immaculate. This video is not sponsored, but Universal Audio sent me the Apollo X4 for a review. And before we get started, if you guys are interested in anything that you've seen in my home studio, including the Apollo X4 and the SD1, please check the description below. I have everything listed down there. Also other gear that could possibly help you on your creative journey. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss another video. Thank you. So now let's jump into the front plate, the front panel. And this is the most important part. Um, if you're an artist, a musician, an engineer, and you like to have everything right in front of you, I love, first of all, this desktop design. You have so many <laughs> options with just these few amount of buttons right here on the front. And these are your option selector buttons right here. And you guys can also see we have our indicator as far as our monitor right here. But let's start from this side over where it says talk and input and it's grayed out. So everything you see highlighted is the actual control. It controls these buttons control the highlighted areas. If I hit the talk back button, we're going to drop some decibels so I can communicate with the artist through this microphone here. Now we move over to them. We're also going to drop some decibels to just crank it down a little bit for that protocol or for that setting where you want to just like talk or something in the studio. The next thing is the alt button. 
that is dealing with your monitors. That is your second set of monitors. You can do a third alt as right now. I have the FCN. I have that program to my third set of monitors, which is going to my camera, which is really cool. Here's your mono button, and there is your mute button. Mute, 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 levels. That was the mute button right there. I only have control over this in this way when I hit the monitor button. And when I hit the monitor button now, it goes from headphone one to headphone two to monitor. So this knob is controlling everything um, as far as the monitoring right here. Now, if I go over to preamp, it goes to the second row that was grayed out. So we go back to monitor. We just had control over that. Now we're hitting the preamp button. Now we have control over the channels. Now, how I toggle between the channels, the four channels right here above it, is I hit the preamp button. And there we go right there. Now what the input button do with the option selector switch here, if I click that, it changes it to line. And I can go through each channel and keep selecting it to line and switch it toggle between. So if you have an instrument, a set of keyboards, play the audio through, um, you're gonna set it on that line level right there. And you have a guitar. And of course, you know, we have the two guitar inputs right here at the front, um, the line inputs right here. This will be channel one and two. So we can toggle between those with one and two, but it continues on, you can't go backwards. And then if we go over here, this enables a low cut filter. And if we go hit the phantom power, the button's gonna highlight, and there we go, we have phantom power. Let's turn that off, because we don't want anything crazy to happen. <laughs> and we wanna use the pad. We can crank that microphone or that input down with the pad. And also we have our polarity right here and we can link our channels one and two, three and four. You see how it doubled up there. So let me show you guys what I mean. If I go back to the first channel and if I hit the link button, now channel one and two are paired up. Now, once again, these buttons, the preamp button controls your input. The monitor button controls your outputs, such as your headphones and your monitors, additional monitors and your F your FCN programming right there. And the big knob controls all of it. So it's really cool and intuitive. And don't forget, you have your um, two high Z guitars right here and your two headphones that you control with the big knob right there as well. Now let's hop over here to the back and let's break this down, boys and girls. The optical out and in, this gives you up to eight channels of ADAT or SPDIF digital I.O. right here. You look below that, you have your power button, that's your off and on switch, and you have a lock-in power adapter, which is really cool. You can connect a Thunderbolt for Mac or Windows. Now, remember what I said, guys, I'm actually using a 2012 MacBook Pro with an adapter, and that is actually giving me the ability to use my older computer. This is backwards compatible, so that's pretty awesome. And you see your line out three and four right here, and line and your line one and two, these are your extra analog line outputs right there. And your main monitor outputs is right next to that, which is your left and your right. You guys saw when I was able to toggle between the Alt and the FCN button, that gives me the ability to utilize my monitors right there with the line one, two, and three, and four. We have our mic and line four inputs right here with Unison technology and all four, which is really awesome. So let's talk about the build quality. First of all, it's built heavy duty. There are no plastic parts other than this right here, which I just can't, I can't take this off. I don't know why I think it's so cool because after two or three years with my Apollos, I eventually take it off because it just looks so bad from the daily usage, but I keep this little screen protector here on. Um, but yeah, no plastic parts. It's like an all metal. The screws are sturdy. The inputs and outputs on the back of here are really built in there and they're really locked in. So if you're constantly pulling out microphone cables or monitor cables or the Thunderbolt, you don't have to worry about that connector getting loose on here because this is very well built and it's very well vented. As you guys can see, there's a vent at the back. There's vent on the side along the back right here it cuts off at the back because the top is actually where it vents out at which is really a great design because the heat rises up and just emits out which is really cool so i like that about this as far as the build quality now let's talk about the sonic quality my latest single play that i just released was recorded on this actual audio interface here it's actually picking up pretty well it's on two radio stations it's also in six spotify playlists right now which is really cool and um this gave me the right quality that i needed including the talk box part of the song um if you guys can hear it right here Baby, cause So 
So all of the vocals were recorded on this, all of it. The music production, the conversion, everything was done on here. So um, it's a pretty cool audio interface. And if you guys are familiar with Kendrick Lamar, his damn album, it was used, the Apollo was used in a recording of that album. Also Chris Stapleton, um, From a Room, Volume 1, Arcade Fire, everything. Post Malone, Beers and Bentleys, because it just delivers quality and they last a long time. You guys can see my Apollo 8 quad right there in the back. It's about seven years old. I still use it. I actually cascaded these two, like I said, to record my latest single and I use it all the time. My film scores, they last a long time and they sound great. This Apollo features 12 ins and 18 outs and the connection is Thunderbolt 3. And this Apollo was seriously upgraded from their previous Apollo. They upgraded the A to D conversion to an elite class, which supplies pristine signal path of 127 decibels of dynamic range. And if you guys can take a look right here at the back as well, all of the XLR jacks are right at the back of the audio interface and all of them are equipped with Unison preamps. So you can take advantage of the Universal Audio console and, and activate those Unison preamps, um, some amazing sounding Unison preamps, and, um, and deliver those quality vocals and those quality guitar tracks and those quality drum tracks. I like the way they integrated TalkBack. You have that option here as well and you have complete control of it within your console software. And another reason why I initially invested in the Apollos when I first when they first came out is that I saw the zero latency, the low latency ability of these audio interfaces, so that was a no-brainer. And while working in Pro Tools, I can easily initiate that no latency and be independent, complete of Pro Tools and just working directly on the Apollo while I'm operating Pro Tools, which is really just, it's a no brainer. I know I talked about the ADD conversion, but specifically you have 24 bit, 196K of, of ADD conversion. The UAD has quad processing. That means you have four chips built in here and it does come with plugins. It comes with the UAD real time analog plugin suite and that's VST AU AAX 64 bit. And these plugins are compatible with majority of the DAWs and dolls out there, such as Logic Pro Tools, Cubase, Ableton, Studio One. If you guys have any questions about the Apollo, I've been using the Apollo seven plus years on everything from my film scoring to my re record mixing for film to music. I, I use these Apollo. So if you guys have any questions about them, please comment them below. I'll be happy to answer them. Also, if you guys have any questions about the SD1, be sure to comment as well. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Thank you so much. Don't forget to be great and create. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss another video. You guys are awesome. This is your Barcha Beats, and I'm signing off.